Hey everybody! Today's game was played during the Gosu Cup and it was a match between Team Dignitas and Griffiths Gaming. And I have to admit that I made a bit of a brain fart when I was recording the match because for some reason I mixed up Griffiths and Team Stigma. Both of them are Spanish teams, but of course with different lineups. And I've been talking about like Team Stigma the entire time in the match itself. It was Griffiths Gaming, so sorry for the brain fart there and I hope that you can still enjoy the game. It was a pretty insane match between the two of them. The first map actually in the best of three series in the loser bracket of the Gosu Cup and we have Curse Tolo as the map. Dignitas has been doing really well just lately but at the same time of course they have to fight through the loser bracket now since they lost in the winner's bracket. For Griffiths it's a very similar situation. The Spanish team had very very good results especially in the weekly cups but today they have to prove themselves against Team Dignitas and that's not going to be easy. So once again the team that you are going to see right now is not Stigma. It is Griffiths Gaming despite what I'm saying in the game itself. I hope that you can join the match because this game was pretty damn crazy. Game on ladies and gentlemen, we have Dignitas going up against Team Stigma. This is a game that was played in the Gosu Cup, a pretty awesome tournament. It was actually the Gosu Cup final and it's part of the loser bracket that we are currently watching here. The first map between Team Stigma and Dignitas. Dignitas starting here on Curse Hollow towards the left side of the map with Chris on Tyranda. We have Blood Dragon on ETC. Sailors, famous for very epic owls that you can find on Calder TV. Uh, is playing Sylvanas today. Norok on Sergeant Hammer and Linked is playing Malfurion. Oh. To the right side of the map it is Team Stigma, the Spanish team with wow. Ozzy on the Lost Vikings, Shivatas on Uther, Kanda on Jaina, Max Prime on Diablo, and Inception is playing Zagara here. So we're going straight into this first game here, and this is going to be a pretty epic start. I mean, the comps already are quite nice that we see there. Up to the top lane, we have Sailors, Norok, and Link going for a tri lane, and with Max Prime. I'm playing Diablo here. The one thing that they of course want to do or would like to do is go into a stun lock using Diablo to just slam a target around using Uther to lock him down again and then it's Jaina with her burst damage that can just deliver the raw power that they need to drop a target. We have a couple of adjustments with the first talent. We're going to talk about those in a second because right now it's as you can see Max Prime who tries to go for maybe a bit of a kill there. Sailors and Link need to be very careful how they handle this. The Vikings occupying the mid lane at this point. And we're having now with a level 1 talent, especially on the side of Malfurion, a bit of an adjustment, not going for Conjurer's Pursuit there, but instead using the Scouting Drone. And that's a talent that we see a bit more often, sometimes even taken on ETC, who took block on level 1 here to have a bit more survivability. But Scouting Drone got a change in the last patch and has now two charges, which is pretty awesome. And the top lane here with Sergeant Hammer, a hero that we don't see all that often anymore, but in this case it's being played. Needs to be careful, of course, because Jaina can do a lot of burst damage, especially if that second blizzard hits you as well when you already chilled. So far the top lane is actually going really well for Team Dignitas, and they're starting to push that in. On the Lost Vikings, we have the Viking Horde, which currently still has the same icon as the Regeneration Master. It's also pretty similar, as you can see, it's just a bit of an adjustment. Oh, here we go, no wrong with the immediate focus. Max Prime charges in, slams him around, Kanda is trying to deliver the damage there. Down to the bottom lane, we're having Inception going up against Blood Dragon, already spreading creep everywhere, as in the mid lane, Chris is facing the Lost Vikings. They're not so lost anymore and are just like trying to uh, get the experience here so far. It's actually not really n very common any longer that you split the Vikings at the beginning of the game. Usually that's rather something that you would do later on, especially of course on this map when you want to catch a tribute while the fight is happening on the other end of the map. Nice blizzards here, but good heals also from Ling to make sure that Nurog is not dropping too low and can still deliver the siege damage against the wall of the Spanish team. Double and Venom is of course now going to make Stigma very very dangerous, especially to Nurog at the top lane. They have one and Venom, oh sorry, they have only one and Venom. One and Venom on Jaina, the second and Venom is on Sylvanas on the side of Team Dignitas. For Zagara though we have the Envenomed Spines, which are pretty similar but don't give you that burst damage that you can get with the target. So still and Venom of course a great talent to get the additional damage in on Jaina. We're having now with a spin to win on the Vikings, also another choice for them to just get away. We're having at the same time the tribute spawning on the map and that is tribute number one in this particular game here and immediately Sailors is moving in but there's Shivatas trying to go for the interrupt and he gets it. Ozzy is getting in position at the bottom lane we're having still ETC going up against Zegara but up here to the top it's still the four players for each team trying to get their kills in. They are aiming straight for that. Once again we have Max Prime getting into position. They're really trying to just interrupt for as long as they can and that's the big big part that they need to go for here right now. 
Um, so Linked is trying to get that channel, but moves back already as to the top. Diablo is moving in against Nurogon Sailors. Both of the heroes getting away for now. And this is just both teams playing a very, very caution, uh, cautious opening into this particular match. And it's quite understandable. We are in the loser bracket of the Gosu Cup already. And if you lose the first map here, that would of course put you in a very dangerous position. You want to stay in the tournament, you want to advance to the grand final, but it's not going to be easy, especially since Stigma is about to capture the first trip, but they don't get it, but they get the kill against Linked. A great surround here, able to surround Malfurion with four heroes. Uh, Chris is at least for now stunning out the tribute attempt of Stigma, but I feel at this point it's uh, it's going to end up in their hands, isn't it? I mean, what exactly can Dignitas do about it? There were five heroes on the map again, but so far they don't have Malfurion with the party anymore. Level 7 is also hitting a bit faster for the Spanish team, and that should give them all they need to really move in against this position. But Nuruk has set up in that bush and is trying to get the damage in with his Sergeant Hammer, and he's doing work. And Malfurion has taken uh, the mid lane again. So they're trust trying to delay that tribute for as long as possible. But Chris is getting locked down at the second kill. Wow, Sigma is not only getting the tribute, but they're getting two kills. They take down Tyrande here now as well. So the top lane occupied by Nurgan Sailors now still keeping that heartbeat up there. We're having linked down in the mid lane up to the top. Diablo was trying to jump in again to get another kill for the Spanish team. But so far Dignitas is trying to keep the heroes at least for now alive here. We're having follow through taken already. First aid on Sergeant Hammer. It is enduring growth that we're seeing on the side of Malfurion in this game. And the Luna Blaze is rounding things up for Tyranda as Norok is being attacked. Shield and he eats the damage of the first Blizzard Wave. But the second one is only hitting empty space and I guess the wall itself. So he gets away at least for now. And the bot lane, it's still that battle between Blood Dragon and Inception. And you can really see who's winning this one, since the entire wall is already eliminated. Sagara can, of course, push in an ETC. I mean, he's a great, great hero and an amazing tank. But at the same time, he really struggles against a character that can just push this hard. And Inception is showcasing exactly that. One of the camps has been taken to the left side of the map, where we see the double siege giants moving up towards the top lane right now to try and at least relieve a bit of the pressure that Stigma is putting on the lane. We're having tribute number two spawning now as well, and they interrupt the attempt to get that bruiser camp over here. Aussie on his lost Vikings is already getting position, splitting one of the Vikings off to get the tribute. As to the top lane, Diablo jumps in once more. The first blizzard wave hits. Here comes Shivatas with a stun. Uther is trying to lock down Link even more, but Nuro gets the damage against Diablo and forces them back. The problem still that Ozzy is taking the tribute all on his own. So now two tributes already in the hands of Team Stigma. And they have now a very good position in the game. Not only are they hitting level 10 faster than their opponent, but they are the ones who have two tributes, which means that another one would put the curse upon Dignitas. So this early game is not really going well for Team Dignitas. They get their level 10 now too. We have the longboat, of course, on the Vikings, Divine Shield on Uther in this case, as the water element has been taken on Jaina. Apocalypse and more, that's the big idea that you want to run with if you are playing for the Spanish team right now. Trying to get that set up with a more and then uh, with a good timing. Diablo can use the Apocalypse to just lock those targets down that have been mauled before and then you move in with a long boat and deliver the damage. At the same time now though, for the team on the left side, for the blue team, we are seeing a stage dive being used, the Wailing Arrow. Uh, tranquility and Link is gonna need that. He's already using it since he got attacked by Max Prime and Kanda again. ETC is jumping in there, trying to get the counter kills. It's the 4 versus 3 at the top lane with the Water Elemental. They are being slowed down, but they're still trying to go for Diablo here. Oh, nice move against Blood Dragon on the other hand. ETC needs to be careful with the Power Slide. He's able to get away just for now. And Sailors interrupts the fort from shooting his slow ammunition against the target. So very well done here and they get the kill against the 4-2. Sailors, I really like that move in general just because with that he made sure that there was no problem getting away but the tribute has been taken during all of this and now the blue team is cursed. Dignitas is cursed and the kill against the fort at the top lane was of course nice but now they have to face the music. They sacrifice a lot of time there and the lost vikings were able to get tribute number three and this puts Dignitas in a bit of an awkward spot. At the bot lane Zagara already eliminated the fort so 
this is one that they lost pretty early in the game already. The mid lane is being pushed hard by those waves. They had to go over there with not only Nurok but also Sailors. And they all but abandon the top lane right now since they realize that against this massive push that we're seeing for Stigma, they can't really do too much. So they're gonna lose a second fort here and that could put level 13 into the hands of the Spanish team and that would also mean that they have the advantage in talents once again. Level 12 just hit a few seconds ago for Dignitas and now Stigma is close to get another talent for themselves. Down to the bot lane on the other hand, it's the boss that's being taken by Dignitas now. They say like, alright, no risk, no fun, they go straight for that and trying to go straight for the kill on the boss, capture that, push in the bot lane, but they are suddenly dropping also a few towers at the top lane where the keep is starting to be attacked, or, or will be soon if they don't take care of the situation. We're having level 13 now on the side of Team Dignitas and that means that it's the impatience is a virtue on the Lost Vikings. Inception is already heading over towards the boss at the top lane. Shrink Ray, improved ice block from the shadows and the Hunter Killer talent on Zagara, which makes those Hydras even more annoying. The boss is starting to put the work onto the wall at the bottom lane. So Dignitas is at least, they at least have one lane that is not being pushed by the opponent. Uh, but there is a bit of a trap there. No, just a rotation at the top lane against Link, who's in a really awkward spot all of a sudden. Using Tranquility has to use the Euro ability. He really doesn't want to do that. Oh, what a ball! If they get the Apocalypse setup, that would be amazing, but they don't get it. Apocalypse not being used here. It's a bit too late. Ozzy is getting the damage in with a longboat, but he's, of course, being focused immediately. Tyrande still dies, but it's Max Prime who might die next. Yes, Norok takes him on, but he dies too. Suddenly, Blood Dragon and Sailors, they are the ones trying to move up to the top lane to maybe get kills against Shavatas and Inception. Malfurion is still rushing away from the Lost Vikings, gets dropped as well to the top lane, though Blood Dragon is still on the hunt and he's going for Zagara. He's aiming straight for her. Sailors is there. Oh, Sylvanas dies. Four heroes dead for Dignitas. They might lose the fifth here. Yes, Blood Dragon gets slammed into the ground and Shivatas delivers the final blow here. Seven kills against three at this point. Level 15 against 14. Dignitas is really struggling in this early game here. We're having Stigma with such an amazing job. I didn't really like the way that they tried to set up the mall with the Apocalypse. Apocalypse way too late. I think Diablo might have been stunned. ETC was trying to jump in and could have interrupted that, I suppose. But yeah, that could have been even better for them. They still get the team kill though in the end. They lost a few heroes as a result to it too for the trade, but they did still an amazing job. They're trying to go for the boss here to the top lane, but we have Dignitas back in full strength already, and Stigma has to abandon that idea at least for now. The 13 talents, of course, have also been on the board for quite some time now for Team Dignitas, and they go for the extra heal on Taranda, but Chris is extremely exposed here and is being focused down immediately. He stands no chance, running straight into the trap. Once again, Taranda down, and that means that Dignitas is fighting with four against five, which is, of course, was the worst case scenario for them here. Stigma decides not to go for the boss again. Instead, they're trying to push in. They're trying to actually chase Link down, and they might get the kill against them if Shibatas gets close enough for a stun. They're already going for the Shrink Ray. Nice apocalypse, and Link is biting the dust here. No more Malfurion. Two heroes dead, and nearly level 16 for the Spanish team. Nine kills against three. Really well played by them so far, and they are gaining a lot of momentum in this match. The Tribute, on the other hand, spawns at the bottom of the lane and of the map, and that's why they don't even try to rotate down there. It's way too far away and instead they're going for the boss. The 16 talent is available to them right now which is of course going to be great for them with the northern exposure taken on Jaina. We're seeing the fire devil on the side of Diablo now. The extra hunter killer talent taken on Zagara and this is just really great for her. Zagara is usually a hero that is very vulnerable in the mid game but so far Stigma has been dominating this game completely and Zagara could dish out a lot of damage in this match already. The benediction on on Utha is definitely going to help with the survivability in the next couple of fights and of course the Divine Shield in itself already absolutely amazing for them. The Longboat could deliver even more damage and now that we have the Norse Force for the Vikings this is helping out to keep them alive too. Right now the boss is starting to barrel down that top lane and starts to put some pressure onto the keep and it looks like Stigma is going to try and take that down as fast as they can. There's a tribute on the map but they don't care about this too much just yet. The boss is doing his job and we have Stigma just positioned to catch any hero that overextends for just a second. 
Ah, uh, but they don't get that opportunity. They need to move back here. The boss taken out. Nurok helps, of course, a lot with this. So does Sailors and Chris. Those ranged heroes that they have on the board are really doing work against uh, against the boss, and especially Nurok here on Sergeant Hammer can, of course, deliver the damage, as you can already see with the hero damage alone that he has been able to supply in this game. 32,000 leading the leaderboard there. ETC at the bot lane going for the split experience and that put the level 16 talent into the hands of Dignitas who suddenly starts to close that gap in experience. Thanks to the stage dive he was able to do that but the mid lane, I mean they cannot stop this. On the other hand Max Prime is trying to get the kill against Norok, moves in maybe a bit too deep even as Nor uh, Blood Dragon jumps in on his ETC, the more is there and here comes the Apocalypse setup, this time the perfect setup for them, Tarenda is dead again, she's more dead than alive and they're going for Link now who used his tranquility already but it is stigma who loses cigar right here neuro dying now on sergeant hammer Aussie with a longbow delivering so much damage but Jaina is dead Jaina is down all of a sudden and blood dragon oh is he gonna get the kill against Diablo yes he gets the kill in linked with the ice block trying to stay alive even more but we have the lost Vikings going in for the final blow taking him now down as well Shivata's healing himself there Sailor's not giving up just yet or is he yeah he actually moves back here does not go for the move again against the hero, doesn't even try to hunt Uther down, he knows that the Lost Vikings are still alive and that Diablo is going to come back, so he doesn't want to risk anything here. Six kills against 12, still the lead in experience on the side of the red team, on the Stigma, the Spanish team playing a very, very good game here, but they haven't really gotten anything uh, from, their, from the advantage that they had throughout the game. They couldn't kill a keep yet, they did some pressure play at the top, where they were able to drop half of the hit points of the top keep, but that's all there is to it. Blood Dragon is going for the second tribute for his team right now channeling that and catching it and as you can see with the 16 talent that we are having now on the side of Dignitas they've been able to really fight back in the last battle they have a double stone skin now on ETC and also Sergeant Hammer which keeps both of the heroes alive in those fights we're having the true shot aura for the additional damage and the cold embrace alone together with the hunter smart that we're seeing on Taranda is just making it so easy to snipe a target and if they get a hold of Zagara they can drop her within seconds of course also the hardened focus on Malfurion as long as Lin can stay in the the back at least that is is really helping them with the healing power in there. six kills against 12 and it's again it's again stigma trying to move in here towards the boss it's the only one on the map but we're having a hot camp or well, a bruiser not a bruiser camp sorry it's each giant camp pushing at the top lane and starting to really put some pressure onto those towers with the tribute now spawning on the map it looks more like the red team is just attempting to get the next one of course they can't let this one go I mean there's two tributes already for team dignitas and if they get this one as well then there would be a curse on Stigma and they want to avoid that uh, in any case. Right now it's still the boss that both of the teams are fighting over. 18 versus uh, nearly 19 in levels and the creep tumor is being taken out there. Now the Moonfire Flink revealing it and then they focus it down uh, right away. <laughs> both of those are still trying to find an opportunity to engage into that battle but ETC during all of this is just getting the split push experience and for Dignitas this is a great situation as long as there's no fight as long as it's only a stalemate ETC can farm that split push EXP and when the fight really starts he just uses his heroic ability and jumps in with a stage dive now he's meeting up with the rest of the team again We're having Stigma trying to move in once more of course they know that this is a big I mean this is the price right now getting the boss is the big objective on the map and stigma wants to make sure that Dignitas is not moving in for this but here we have the setup that we've been talking about blood dragon is moving in the two tanks going up against each other as Nuruk starts to go in the cleanse on Uther is saving Diablo for now Aussie on his Vikings is trying to get into a better position for the longboat but we're having Dignitas moving back once again level 19 versus 19 in just a few seconds up to the top lane the two towers are already gone and this keep is on half HP this is really starting to get a bit nasty for Stigma. They were so far ahead in the game, but now all of a sudden, with them just not being decisive enough, we have Dignitas clawing their way back into the match. The first map here in the best of three series, Blood Dragon moving to the top lane now that we have another tribute. This is the tribute that really counts. It's the tribute that both teams need to take. If you win a team fight here and get that tribute, put the curse onto your opponent, you could be able to take both of the bosses 
push in the keeps, and maybe even win the game. And they are trying. They definitely are trying. 19 versus 19. Both of the teams will have a level 20 on the board very soon if they just win one more team fight and get a bit more experience here. Blood Dragon and his team, they're angling towards the Banelings moving in from Zagara. Already starting to do a bit of damage. Norg is trying to do the exact same thing with his Napalm Strike that he uses his heroic ability, of course. We're having, again, both of them just fighting for the tribute, fighting for a position here. And the longer the fight lasts, the better for Nuru. He can just dish out so much damage with the Napalm even before it happens. Blood Dragon is going up against Diablo. Here come the Bane Links again. Max Prime with a very optimistic channel attempt on the tribute. And here comes the jump. They're going for Link to are they? Oh, no more. This time they're going for the Apocalypse. They don't really have the proper setup. Immediately Tranquility being used. The only hero that is getting more is the Sergeant Hammer. Longbow focused down by Dignitas as fast as they can, but still Taranda drops. Oh, no rock with the kill. No, Zagara gets away. Oh my god, that was so close. Jane on the other hand is not escaping. And we have Blood Dragon still trying to get the kill here. Finds Zagara, takes her down. Two kills against one. Very well done by Dignitas. Blood Dragon, like a bloodhound, he moves in. He finds Zagara and takes her on. Suddenly the curse is on Stigma. Level 20 by now already for Dignitas. They have one Storm Shield, the ball of the Storm. Two Storm Shields, actually. And for ETC, we are most likely going to see the Hardened Shield. Yeah. But Stigma has the level 20 talent now as well. And they are going for a double ball of the Storm on Jaina and Zagara. We're having Fort Diablo on Storm Shield. We're Redemption on uh, Uther. And it's Ragnarol on the side of the Lost Vikings. Making that longboat even more effective. The problem for them, of course, is that they are in danger of losing the top keep. And Aussie and his Lost Vikings, they are already moving in and trying to prevent that as fast as they can. The boss, on the other hand, is not going to give them an easy time there. Most likely going to be able to take that down. Eight kills against 13 at this point in the game. Looking at the damage dished out, just look at Noroki with 54,000 already and Sylvanas with 43,000 is also pretty impressive there, especially since she's also very high in the siege damage, not only in the hero damage. Siege damage chart led by the Vikings, Lost Vikings are taking it here. And as the red team is defending the top lane, unsuccessfully by the way, they're losing their keep. We have Dignitas going for the second boss. Second boss is already there, and now they are trying to move in once again. Level 20 versus level 28 kills against 13. The teams are really trying to close this game out right now. With one keep already dropped, this is exactly what you are aiming for. You might be able to just, after another team fight, end this game once and for all, and that's exactly what Dignitas is attempting right now. They have that advantage of the boss moving to the bot lane. One stun, one root is anything is all that they need. The lockdown against Diablo. Great move with the divine shield. Oh, and there is the more. Do they get this set up with the apocalypse? Yes, they do. Nice on there against Chris Taranda. Once again in trouble. The longboat already dishing out so much damage, but it gets focused immediately. It's down before he can do anything. Chris is moving away. Taranda this time staying alive so far. Nobody dying in the battle. Another blizzard hitting home, but only the first wave. Max Prime is trying to get another lockdown. Maybe against Blood Dragon, who's jumping away with the bolt of the storm. He didn't go for the hardened shield. He went for the bolt and he could use it in the last fight. Sailors, on the other hand, is getting hunted. He's getting hunted down hard. Sylvanas is dead and Norok dies too. A double kill for the Spanish team as the boss did not only take down the keep at the bot lane but is suddenly applying pressure to the core itself. Over here on the other hand, Blood Dragon jumped in once again. He's still there. He's trying to go for Zagara. Zagara gets away with the ball of the storm. Oh my god, I cannot believe that, uh, that Jaina is still alive. Blood Dragon on the other hand is dropping super low. Chris healing him up in the last second here and they are buying so much time for that boss to do damage to the core. 70%, 69%. Jaina already moving back. Trying to go for the defense here. 60% on the core. 58, 55. The boss is going completely ham on that core. 45% at this point. 39, 36. Oh my god, this is getting close. 36% on the core. This is crazy. They are really in danger of getting backdoored at this point. Even with them having 16 kills against 8, leading that kill chart, having twice as many kills as Dignitas, they are still the ones who suffered the most damage against their main structure in these battles. And of course, that long and drawn out fight at the bot lane, that was something that might have cost Dignitas a lot of heroes, but at the same time it also made sure that their boss could do so much damage, not only taking down the key, but also taking all these hit points away from the core. Now they are cursed though. And this is the third tribute, and this is the time for Stigma to shine. Stigma has played a great game so far. They've been doing so much damage throughout 
the entire game. They've gotten the kills. They've won those team fights. Dignitas has been playing, has been getting stronger and stronger, but they really start to struggle now against this. With the curse and the entire power of the Spanish team going up to the top lane to drop that keep, this is of course a pretty dangerous situation. One hero kill, maybe two, that's all that Stigma needs right now to end this game. If they get a quick kill here, just somehow, just somehow dropping a target, then they would be able to finish this game out and go for the core right away. But so far, they have to de-push the lanes first. There is the curse against Dignita, so it's a very dangerous spot in the game for them right now. Looking at the heal, by the way, Malfurion with 65,000. We're having 65,000 as well on an Uther, 18,000 on Tyranda, and... Here they go, once again, trying to drop keep number two. The top lane already pushed in, and at the same time now they are moving in here once again. Nuruk in the back, sieged up on Sergeant Hammer, and he's doing a lot of damage, making sure that it's not easy for Dignitas to really take down these structures. But Dignitas is also now in danger of Let losing more structures in the bottom lane. The curse is over, though. And, well, in hindsight, I don't think that Stigma is going to be too happy with how little damage My they dealt to Dignitas sad. there. They took down a keep, which was super important, but still they are the ones who have lost two of them already and right now we have them just moving up to the top of the map again trying to go for the siege shine camp there yeah, they're trying to go for it they're moving in against blood dragon blood dragon is being attacked here here comes the napalm ah and they steal the camp away the lost vikings are in position the water elemental already being used against etc he's getting slowed down but just look at how low jaina already is she's so squishy and with all that napalm that is being used here by nurok it's really 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 uh, uh, difficult to keep her alive and Nuruk didn't go for Nexus Frenzy Nuruk did not go for Nexus Frenzy he went for the advanced lava strike and that is a great talent if you just want to poke if you want to stay away from your opponent if you want to go to max range and just like get those shots with napalm in over and over again and really poke against an opponent before the actual fight starts and this is the talent to go for and that's exactly what they've been trying the entire time already make sure that the stigma cannot go into those fights on full HP and they've been doing well the boss is up on the lane again to up boss up at the top lane here comes that scouting drone that we've been talking about at the beginning of the match link decided to go for the scouting drone over the conjurer's pursuit which we usually see there provides a bit more vision and now both of the team 25 minutes into the match really just waiting for another opportunity to shine here bosses up not only one of them by now it's both of them the one at the top lane is the, what the teams are starting to contest here but as you can see we still have that opportunity for dignitas to maybe go for a backdoor attempt they can always threaten to go straight for the core and that is something that stigma has to react to they cannot afford not to they don't want to lose this first game here and it is a really intense one at that the boss to the bottom lane is being attacked right now stigma on the other hand they are moving to the top lane are they trying to go for the core it looks like it they were waiting out the wave they're going for the core the boss is being attacked down here at the bottom the tp back already started but here comes stigma they're trying to end the game they're trying to go for it right away there comes the improved ice block we already have star for being used etc jumping in with this heroic ability in a nice more great more against dignitas and look at that tribute look at the core the core goes down to 40 percent but sagara is dead jaina is dead as well 26% on the core 22 the Vikings die Uther dies 10% 10 9 8 7 7 7 and they actually save the core for now only Uther is still alive he's the only hero well not really alive his redemption is gonna bring him back to life and he's trying to kill it 3% 3 fucking percent you got to be kidding me redemption they nearly forgot about it Stigma is already calling the GG and Sneaky Uther. Oh my god, he nearly did it. 3% on the core. He dropped another percent actually. 3 against 36 and now Dignitas is moving cross map once again. And Link is just pointing out that apparently his team completely forgot what the level 20 of Uther does. It brings him back to life and he nearly ended the game. But now we have Dignitas moving in. They want to end it all. They go straight for the core. They ignore Diablo completely. They don't need to fight him here. Zagara is going to be back in another second. So nobody it doesn't really matter. There it is. The GG. And we have Dignitas taking the game here on Cursed Hollow against Team Stigma at the Goes to Cup Losers bracket. Oh my god. What a match.
Griffiths Gaming with a really good start into the match. Actually, like they were the ones getting the first four or five kills here and they really got ahead. But Dignitas turning that around and I mean, especially the end of the game, completely crazy with first of all, the red core going down to a club of 50%, then the turnaround. And it was just beautiful to see how that match just went back and forth the entire time. Really entertaining. I certainly had a blast. I hope you did too. If you had a good time, then make sure that you give the video a thumbs up on YouTube. I'm guys, I'm going to see you soon with more Heroes of the Storm content here on Kala TV. Subscribe to the channel if you want to get notification about new videos. And of course, once again, if you have any questions about the lineups that were played here or about the videos in general, make sure to leave a comment in the comment section. Have a good day and see you soon. Bye bye.